It was more than 30 years since New Mexicans had heard the howl of the Mexican gray wolf, but thanks to a recovery program led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the once nearly extinct Mexican gray wolf is back. As wolves came into conflict with livestock operations and other human activities, private, state, and federal extermination policies were carried out against the wolf until it had been all but eliminated from the United States and Mexico. In 1976, the Mexican gray wolf got a new lease on life when it was listed under the Endangered Species Act. The Apache and Gila National Forest in eastern Arizona and western New Mexico were identified as sites for reintroduction. By the time the captive breeding program was started, there were only seven Mexican wolves uh, alive. And so we've gone from seven Mexican wolves in the late 70s to early 80s to about 300 wolves in captivity today. The program started in 1998, and today, there are 50 wolves roaming wild. So how can you tell the difference between one of these wolves and a coyote? A Mexican wolf is similarly colored. They have a very similar coloration pattern, um, but they're a lot bigger. A Mexican wolf can weigh between 50 and 80 pounds. Um, coyotes tend to have uh, you know, a skinny, longer snout, and a Mexican wolf has a more uh, short and uh, blunt nose. Um, same with the ears. Coyotes tend to have these really funny, big ears, um, and wolves have sort of rounder, more robust ears. And there are other differences, including body size. And because the wolves are innately afraid of humans, the task of relocating them has to be handled with care and caution. When we translocate wolves, first we need to wolves to translocate. Uh, those are typically animals that have been removed from the wild for one reason or another. Um, oftentimes they're re-paired at one of the pre-release facilities, so a male and a female will be paired together for a subsequent translocation. And there's a lot that goes into it from there, um, primarily finding a release site and building a mesh release pen. Um, most of our translocations do occur in the Gila wilderness, so that often entails packing the materials in on mules to the release site, building the pen, packing back out, you know, packing more materials in until the pen is ready. And once the pen is ready, we'll go into the pre-release facilities and capture the animals and uh, put radio collars on them, give them fluids, draw blood if we need to, give them their vaccines. Uh, this capture usually happens kind of late afternoon or early evening. We capture the wolves in the pen by using their fear of humans to our advantage. Uh, we'll walk in a, a line, we'll usually have about 10 or 15 people helping us and we'll walk in sort of a, a human wall, we call it, and we can push through the pen and just because they're afraid of us they'll tend to circle around one area of the pen where there's either a tree that they'll dive under um, or a, a capture box that's kind of like a a dog house, you know, it's got a door on one side and they go in there thinking they're hiding, um, but we can close the, the door that they entered in and actually lift the lid off and, and pull them out that way. The wolves are kept well hydrated during the relocation process and the service has high hopes for the pair they are releasing into the Gila. We've had some reports where people have been really elated to hear the wolves howling at night and some reports of just the presence of wolf, but uh, no complaints yet. And we have personnel in the area that are actually trying to haze them sort of more, you know, back into the, the wilderness area where they, they should be. And Maggie has her own personal reactions to the program. It's a little nerve-wracking. It's a little, you know, your ability to control the situation is over. And you sort of have to just wish them luck and hope they don't get into conflict situations and, you know, cross your fingers. So, you know, the scientist side of me says, you know, two more or four more. And the, the emotional side of me, you know, wishes I could do more for them. It's a 20-mile trip into the Gila wilderness for this pair, and thanks to the combined efforts of many agencies, biologists, and volunteers, the Mexican gray wolf is winning the battle against extinction. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service realizes that reintroduction of a top predator, such as a Mexican wolf, is highly complex and often controversial. It is important to understand the role Mexican wolves are playing on the landscape including all of the potential biological, social, and economic impacts, be they good, bad, or indifferent. For more information, you can Google Mexican Gray Wolf Recovery. That will direct you to the Fish and Wildlife Services Wolf Recovery Program.